a little bit of a short night for you. Oh, I mean, I think the changes that we made, we think they're going to work better. You know, when the car really started to come in, it's just like I said, tough break. I don't know. So that happens. It happens fast, and you just got to use that gut instinct. And we got some good tires left on the car that we can use for later. All right. This is only what the second time you've raced here. So, yeah. uh, what do you yeah. think of the place, and, and how do you think you can get around it? You know that the other time I raced here was for the Tundra race back last year when we raced here, and I fell in love with the track, and that's why I told my dad. I said, Dad, to race the Slinger Nationals is on my bucket list. So I wanted to make it happen. I'm living down North Carolina, so I happen to have a break in racing down there, and I can come back and do it. So I feel privileged. How is it working out with uh, being with Steve Abel and having him help select the car and all? I can't, well, one, I'm so grateful because I can't believe he's helping me out. He's keeping the car down him by him, and literally his whole crew is bending over backwards. So I think to have that support from someone that's that good, when you think of Singer Speedway, you think of Steve Apel, it's awesome. I mean, I couldn't ask for anything better. Uh, obviously, if the, if the car set up you know, runs good and everything, it's going to be a tough field just to make the feature for the Slinger Nationals with all the guys that are coming oh. up for it. Yep, and that's saying it lightly. I mean, it is going to be tough. It's They take 12 cars on time, so... Everything's got to be perfect, and we know that. So, like I said, we wanted to come try and race here. Um, we got a plan. I don't know. I'm excited. I want to be. I want to be the only girl that makes it in. So we'll see what happens. What are your expectations for the race? Assuming you make it in, of course. You know, like I said, Steve has been bending over backwards. Tells me everything. He's been really good. Um, that's tough. I would say top 15 would be awesome. Like, like with most people, it's kind of like the old adage of, you know, I, I'll teach you, you know everything you need to know about everything right. that I know about how to get around right. here. So. Right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. When my car's at his place and he really wants to do setup, I'll have to leave. But you know what? He, he, like I said, for him to share his secrets with us and put them on my car, that's awesome. And I think he's an awesome guy and if, we can, if we're not fast with him, I'll help us then. I don't know. How's the racing down south been going? I've been keeping up with it somewhat online. Good. Yeah, no, uh, we race, I'm under contract for, it's 12 to 15 races is what it is, and I race at three different tracks, and what it is, it's a late model stock, so it's a little bit slower than these cars, a little bit heavier, you know. They're tough to drive, but I'm getting the hang of it. New crew, my last race was at Motor Mile, 32 cars, we finished 23rd the first race and 11th the second race, so we're starting to get the hang of it. It's, it's fun. How much of the difference is there between how they race down south and how they race up here in the Midwest? I mean, it seems to me every time I've watched it, there's a, there's a night and day difference to how racing goes on down there. Right. I think competition's competition anywhere. I think that's super late model. I just think, to me, a super late model is such a prestigious class, is what I really believe. And But that late model stock, I mean, those are the type of bodies where you move up to k and then you move up to a nationwide. That's what you got to do. So. Mm -hmm. For us up here, we think late, super late mile, super late mile, super late mile. Well, no, there's more. You know, if you really want to move up, you have to drive those heavy body cars. So, just doing what I need to do. So it's been a pretty good learning process for you this whole time. Oh yeah, for sure. And, and like I said, it's a NASCAR diversity program. They work so closely with NASCAR. I know so many people that I've gotten introduced to. They give me all the connections I need. So I said, just the hope is to move up next year and move into that K9 car and hope they don't pick my sister instead of me. <laughs> Well, speaking of your sister and, and, and your cousin, I mean, they've both been doing really well around yeah. here lately. Yep. Yeah, I try and keep up as much as I can. I'm always texting, keep me updated, keep me updated. I know they're doing great. My sister, it's only her second year in a super late model. Natalie, it's her first year. And, I mean, I can't say anything negative about them. They're learning, they're learning, they're learning. And that's, they're getting seat time. That's the most important thing. I, I've seen Natalie race several times this year. It's just amazing how yeah. she's gone from the way she was two years ago to now. And it's oh, a yeah. night and day difference. Like, yep. it's not the same person. It's yep. just... It's just yep. amazing how she's able to, to yep. do things now. It seems like if you progress in like exactly what she did and she moved from a limited late model to super stock, if you can learn how to drive those cars and you get no super late model, then you're confident, you're comfortable, you know. It's going to take her some time before she's winning races, but she knows that, you know, she's going to pay her dues and we all got to. Well, when I talked to her about this, and most people said the same thing, where it's actually easier to drive a super light than it is to drive a yeah. limited. Yeah, yeah. I guess I've never drove a limited. They threw me right in the super light, so I don't know, but... Super is tough. The competition is way tougher in the super late model series. Yeah. All right.